Well, amen and amen. We want to welcome you here to Fremont Missionary Baptist Church. I want to thank you so much for coming out, being a part of this service as you take part of your day, this uh, wonderful weekend for which we get together and we celebrate. And if you're like me, oftentimes I, I found this day uh, sort of about hot dogs, hamburgers, and holidays. Amen. But... <laughs> Uh, you know, when, when, when you pay that price, uh, when you've lost someone in service, uh, you realize what this weekend is really about. And I thank you uh, for coming uh, here today. Uh, we live in a land that is the freest country in the world. And I agree that there are times when we doubt that, when we see some limitations to that, but we are still the land of the free. And I am thankful for that. I am grateful for it. And there are 600,000 graves to accentuate that cost. And as we sit here today, I would not only ask you to remember the 600 plus people who have, 1,000 people who have died, but remember the brothers, remember the sisters, remember the spouses, remember the parents, who even to this day continue to bear the cross. Today we reflect on them and we reflect on the lives that will continue to mount up as we continue to keep our nation free. You see, like inflation, things are going up these days. Well, my friend, the freedom that we have today is still costing us today. Today, there will be soldiers who will die in the field. Today, there will be phone calls that will be made to tell their families their loved one is no longer coming home. This day and tomorrow and every day from that point, just so you and I can have the freedom we have today. And so let's take a moment now and just thank the Lord for that. Father, thank you, God, for loving us the way you do. We welcome you into the presence of this church today. We pray, God, you would dwell among us today and be happy with all that we do. In Jesus' name we pray, amen, amen. and amen. At this time, we're going to ask that uh, Troop 12 would bring our flags up, and then following that, Miss Marcy West is going to sing the Star Spangled Banner for us. say our pledge to the flag today. Join me as we pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Thank you to Chief 12.
I'd like to say thank you to everyone who turned out today. Uh, I was telling, uh, I want to call him Director Tony Moore because he's our food bank director with the Christian Fellowship Alliance that at National Day of Prayer, was, which was just back at the beginning of May, Pastor Tim looked at me and he said to me, he said that uh, he felt like we were going to need to plan this. And I looked at him with this horrified look because we were just putting away the chairs from National Day of Prayer. <laughs> and then he looked at me and he said, listen, uh, I'm going out of town next week, so I'm going to need you to start planning it now. So I appreciate your attendance. I'll be very honest with you, as Marcy was singing the Star Spangled Banner, I got very emotional. As Pastor Tim said, I for many years felt that this was just a weekend off that it was a weekend to go out of town, not making fun or condemning anybody who's done that. It's a weekend for spending time with family. And then I saw the cost of it. And I had already been thinking along these lines, but uh, our freedom is not free. That there are men and women who stand on the front line and give their lives to protect us and to keep us safe. Today you're going to hear Bible readings from an Army veteran who I'm always, every time I get in his presence, and I just don't say that just because he's here, but I, whenever I get in his presence, I'm humbled because he spent his life protecting mine and my family's. And then you're going to hear from Miss Ruffin, who uh, was in a family that, that's, as her husband served, she had to bear the brunt at home. So I am so grateful for what this day represents. Grateful not for the loss, but grateful for the fact that men and women laid their lives down for us. So I'd like to ask that we come together and let's pray. For all those families who've lost loved ones, to pray for those who are serving now, to pray for our nation, to pray for our president, to pray for our Congress and our Senate as they seek and work to protect us, to keep us safe. Let's bow our heads. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I pray right now that by faith, Lord, you minister and you comfort and you give peace to all those right now who've lost loved ones serving, who've lost loved ones in, in the, the ideals of, of protecting this nation, who gave their life for freedom all around the globe, who gave their life so that we could live ours. I pray that, Lord, you just give peace on this special day, comfort on this special day. I pray in the name of Jesus for those who are serving now, for those who are overseas, for those who are uh, activated now in hot spots around the world, that, Lord, you place angels around them, protect them to keep them safe, Lord, right now. I pray for their families the wives and the spouses, the husbands of those who are serving right now, that, Lord, you give them special grace. That, Lord, you give comfort and you give peace. I pray for our leadership, the leadership of this nation, that, Lord, in the name of Jesus, that, Lord, you give them wisdom. You give them guidance. You give them, Lord, instruction. on how to lead this nation and lead our country and protect our nation and protect our country, Father. We ask all of this in your name. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray, amen. amen.
First, I want to give honor to God. I want to give honor to the uh, pastor, all the clergy in the house. And then I want to thank Pastor Gore for having this program in his beautiful sanctuary. And I want to thank Pastor Travis Moore for asking me to participate in it. As a veteran myself, uh, those fallen Conrad, they are my fallen Conrad. So they are my brothers and sisters, so today is a very special day for me as well. So I'm going to be doing the scripture, and I'm going to be reading from the Old Testament scripture, uh, Psalms 116, uh, 15 through 17. And it reads as such, Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his faithful servants. Truly, I am your servant, Lord. I serve you just as my mother did. You have freed me from my change. I will sacrifice a thanks offering to you and call on the name of the Lord. honor to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ on today, to all the ministers, and you know, Pastor Moore, you said everything that I want to say, but I have to give honor to God who gave us Jesus, Amen. who made the ultimate sacrifice. He laid down his life for all of us, and then on today, we do honor all the veterans, we honor all the military service people. Uh, everyone who's doing something to make America great. And so I say, God bless the USA. And thank you to all of those who have given their lives for us. So we want to keep them in remembrance. to be 
to be an American in the USA. I thank God for my being here on today. I thank the Lord for allowing me to stand in this holy place. I thank God for being able to carry on when my husband was not around, protecting this, our USA. Today, I will be reading from St. Luke, the 23rd chapter, and two verses, 42 and 43. And he said unto Jesus, Lord, remember me when thou cometh into thy kingdom. And Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto thee, Today thou shalt be with me in paradise. Amen. 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 Good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon. Oh, Jesus. I didn't think this was going to be as hard as it is. There is a message. It's been greatly shortened by everything that everyone has said so far. Yes, this is Memorial Day. And yes, we're here to honor our veterans. We're here to honor their spouses, their families who have sacrificed so much to maintain what that flag stands for. You don't think about it as you're going through. But on, today's like, on days like today, 
it begins to hit home. It really begins to hit home. Um, but I want to talk about a different type of individual today. Those of you who are in the kingdom, you are also soldiers. And we have been commissioned to endure hardness as a good soldier. We are in a constant war, a constant battle, good versus evil. But be assured, good always wins. But there's always a price to be paid. Always. That's a brief introduction. Hi, everybody. My name's Keith Spivey. And uh, I won't be before you long today because blessed is he who knows how to be quick. <laughs> You've heard the scriptures read from Luke uh, 23. And my assignment today is not necessarily to memorialize what has happened but to let you know that the healer is in the house today. Let me say that again. The healer is in the house today. And, and just for gee whiz, this, this is a timer. <laughs> the key word today is remember. You've heard it three times already. Well, that's a fourth time. Go with me, if you will. Take a trip with me. There's this place in Israel called Bethany on the Mount, or I should say behind Mount Moriah, there's this place called Golgotha where Jesus met his last. But what I want you to know out of that is this, he is our ultimate commander in chief. He was willing, ready and able to lay his life down for you. He laid his life down for you. He did not look at your skin color. He did not look at your denomination. He did not look at your gender. He did not look at your financial status, nor your social status. But because you were made and created in the image of God, in his image and after his likeness, Jesus said, I will die for you. Amen. Help me, Lord. Yes, sir. Amen. In that place, he was brought to a group of people that could not recognize who he was, that chose not to honor who he is. But because he says, I am the son of God. I am the king of the Jews. I am the savior of the world. They had a hard time with that. Because they were looking for somebody to come in in a Sherman tank, if you will, and just blast people. And just, you're not going to do my people this way. I'm here to rescue them. That's not the way he came. That was never his intention. This is why this is so tough for me. I knew about it. I heard about it. But when it hits you in the face, because these same people, these religious people, the ones that folks looked up to and admired, beat my savior. They spat on him. They slapped him. They treated him like he was nothing, like he was dirt. They did not acknowledge the fact that this was the one and only true son of God. We don't care about that. We ain't trying to hear that. Their mindset was he's more popular than we are. The people love him. They're disregarding us. We can't have that. And that's not why Jesus came. So in this place, they beat him so bad to where he looked like raw hamburger meat. 
He was unrecognizable, but he had enough strength to endure to the end. Friends, we spend a lot of time at the cross. We spend a lot of time at the foot of the cross. Today, the healer has requested that I invite you to go behind the cross. Probably something you've never thought about. See the wounds on his back that he took for you. I mean, to the point to where you could see not only his muscles and his tendons and his nerves, but you could see bone. They beat him that bad. Some of us have been spanked. And depending on where you're from, some of us have got whooped. Amen. Uh, the, the laughter tells me y'all know what I'm talking about. But nobody has ever endured the scourging that our Lord and Savior endured for us. Nobody. And yet, even with all of that, where did he find the strength to be tied to that piece of wood and led out in front of everybody to the place of the skull to be crucified? Where did he find the strength? Let me take you back real quickly to where he makes this statement. I and my father are one. Soldiers of Jesus Christ, those of you assembled in this room today, I, you, and your father are one. In the kingdom of darkness, you and the Lord make the majority. Let me say that again. You and the Lord make the majority. Sickness and disease will constantly knock on your door. Want some advice? Don't answer. Don't answer. Sickness and disease will come. You don't have to accept it. Why? The price has already been paid at the cross. He gave it up for you at the cross. But like I said, this is not going to be a, a long message because most of what needed to be said has already been said. But now I want you to fast forward to 1994. Excuse me while I wet my whistle. Probably, in my opinion, my most bestest famous movie of all time, The Lion King. <laughs> and I know you're probably wondering, how in the world is he going to put that in this? Because I'm not relying on me. Towards the end of the movie, Simba has no idea who he is. He is lost as a goose in a hailstorm. And an old baboon reaches up to him and pretty much tells him, I'm not the baboon you are because you have no idea who you are. Let me go back to that key word. Remember who you are. So then the baboon takes him through all of these thickets and things and gets to this body of water and tells him, look down there. In other words, see not only inside yourself, but see past yourself. My father passed away in April of 2015, and it took me two years to figure out what he had left behind because I was so hurt. I was so devastated. If you've lost a loved one, you know what I'm talking about. But as I left me a legacy of love, my father did things that I never heard about, never knew about, he never talked about, because he just did it, because to him, it was the right thing to do. Why do I make this point? Well, Simba's lost. He has no idea of what he's supposed to do. He's looking down, and then he makes a very horrible statement. He said, 
that's not my father. That's just a reflection. I got your attention, didn't I? Some of y'all have been there. You hear Sunday after Sunday, from preacher to preacher to preacher, God lives in you. Yet in the mornings, you look in this mirror and you go, there ain't no way he could live in something that, like this after what I've said, after what I've done, after what I thought. Listen to me. He lives in you. Even now, regardless of what has taken place, he lives in you. Regardless of what you have gone through, he lives in you. Calm down, boy, calm down. Then Simba, uh, Mufasa, that name just, just has all kind of power to it to me, comes in on the scene through this cloud. And what does he tell his son? Remember who you are. He tells him that three times. Because until Simba remembers who he is, he cannot take his rightful place in life. Hear me, church, until you recognize and acknowledge who you are, you cannot take your rightful place in life. You can't, and you won't, and you will come against people who are doing that, and you're mad at them because they're doing it, and you're not. Remember who you are, especially this Memorial Day. So when he finally do, does that, then the battle goes forth. And what happens? Simba remembers who he is, and he is victorious. Why? Because he and his father are one. What did he do? He remembered who he was. Remember who you are this day. Many of you have sacrificed a great deal. And your bodies are, are, have been racked with pain, have been racked with all kind of stuff. People have been telling you, well, you know, in this, in that, in this, and that. People will say, in, in case y'all didn't know this, let me help y'all. Folks are crazy. <laughs> People are crazy. People will tell you anything. People will say anything to you. Remember who you are. Remember whose you are. There have been some devastating things that have happened to all of us. I pray for my brother here all the time. But see, the thing about it, if you and the father are the majority, and you've taught your loved ones to be in that majority, yes. and they are with Jesus, yes. don't you ever, ever say again that they are lost. They're with him. And be assured the day is coming, you will see them again. You will embrace them again. You will continue again with them, with him. Amen. All is not lost. Amen. Be assured this day, all is not lost. Amen. This body, you, can, can I just demonstrate what's going to happen when that day comes? Uh -huh. That's the only thing you want to do. You're just going to trade places. You're going to put off the old. And you're going to put on the new. That's the only thing that's going to happen. Oh, but that new body. You won't have, you won't have to worry. Ladies, y'all won't have to worry about bumps and cellulite and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> Guys, you won't have to worry about this. You know what you work hard for in your man cave. You won't have to worry about none of that. You'll be able to eat to your heart's desire and won't gain no weight. You'll look just as good as you did when you was a newborn baby. Ah, oh, you like that, huh? <laughs> she said, yes. Hercules, Hercules, Hercules. She like that. Yeah, that's, that's not fictional. That's scripture. Thank you, Lord. <sighs> You've lost loved ones. I get that. The master is with you. He's in you. So everywhere you go, healings is with you. When the doctor says you got this,
tell the doctor, look, I got a life insurance policy that lasts a lifetime. I serve a doctor that has never lost a case. I serve the greater one, and he lives in me. Doc, you do what you do. I'm going to do what I know to do. But you and I are going to agree that he going to do what he does best. I, I know that ain't good English, but that makes good sense. Let him do what he does best. Amen. 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 Father, thank you for these few minutes that I've had to bring forth this word. Amen. Father, I pray that healing, you the healer, sir, are in the house to encourage, to build up, to edify and solidify those who are here today. Father, we are all soldiers in the army of God. I thank you and I pray for my brothers and sisters in arms who are on the forefront, who are still in the fight. Strengthen them now. Encourage them now. Be with their families now, even to this very day. Father, anything that they have lost, yes. you know where it is. <laughs> Help them, Father. Yes. Continue to encourage, lead, and guide. Yes. I thank you. And I pray over this house, Father. And I thank you for this pastor and allowing me to stand in his pulpit. Bless him. I honor him, Father. Bless him. Bless him, God. Because I can feel the pain that, that, that is trying to grip him. Bless him. And I, we just stand up under him as as those young men stood up under Moses to yes. undergird him and to keep him strong because yes. there is a work for him to do yes. and he is not done yet and you are not finished with him yet thank and you, we God. just thank you for it Father in Jesus name Jesus. Amen, Amen. Good job. Good job.
Let's give him another hand. We've had some good music today. That's a good word. And uh, Pastor Spivey, he, I forgot to mention this, he served for many, many years. Miss Rena served at home for many, many years as well. So we honor their service. I'd like to ask uh, for all those who have served in our for our great country and our military. If you'd stand up for just a second so we can honor you. Thank you so much. We want to thank you for your service. We do. We appreciate it so much. Well, your program said that Pastor Tim was going to come up and give the closing prayer, but so many people mix us up anyway. I don't know why. I seem to have a little bit more up here. But um, I want to close out, and I'd like to get Pastor Tim up here, and I'd like for you just to uh, let's stand with him in prayer. And let's pray for him. And let's just believe that God's comfort and peace just over envelops him. And as I pray, if you've lost a loved one in, in combat or in the military, I want you to receive from this prayer as well. Father, in the name of Jesus, right now we pray for this servant of you. Lord, you, I pray you minister to him, put your hand upon him. Father, we thank you that on this day, that Lord, you walk with him. That he is not alone. That his comfort and his peace are in your hands. We pray for everyone who has lost loved ones in here. I pray for them. That right now, Lord, you walk with them and you stand with them right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, I pray that by faith, Lord, right now, that your spirit, your voice rings in their ear today. And that, Lord, I pray as well. I pray that, Lord, you minister to those who are making sacrifices today for our freedom. Thank you so much. For ministering to them. We honor you Lord. As Pastor Keith pointed out. You sacrificed and you gave your life for us. And we honor you for that sacrifice. Thank you for those. Who have volunteered. And joined our nation's military. To minister to us and protect us. In the name of Jesus we pray. Amen and amen. Thank you for coming.